So that's a brief introduction to designing landing gear. Now let's talk a little bit about avionics. This is going to be very brief and high level. And this discussion is again taken from Fielding's book, section 7.1, pages 89 to 96. So what's avionics? Well, aviation plus the electronics equals avionics. So this is just the name for the on-board electronics on an aircraft. These are used to figure out where we are, where we want to go, and how to get there. which is an autopilot. These first two comprise the task of navigation. Uh, also, avionics is used to talk to people on the ground. and in other aircraft. So this is uh, air traffic control primarily in a commercial context. So for communication, let's talk about that first. There are many types of radio systems that are used in aircraft that depend on the distance that the aircraft's located from the ground station with, with which it's trying to communicate. So there's very high frequency just in the range of 100 to 150 megahertz. Um, and radio waves in this frequency range follow approximately straight lines. So this basically means you can communicate as far as the horizon, which is determined by the heights of both the, the antennas of the receiver and the transmitter, obviously. You can do high frequency, which is considered 2 to 30 megahertz. Um, and here you can take advantage of uh, reflection off of the ionosphere to pull off really long range communication, but this requires more transmitter power. Now for navigation, there's a lot of different types of systems uh, that are used to figure out where an aircraft is located, but the two most common modern options are GPS, the Global Positioning System, and the INS, an inertial navigation system. So GPS is very accurate to the order of tens of meters and is excellent for position fixing and navigation. An INS measures acceleration. And it does this using accelerometers that are mounted on a stabilized platform. That stabilization is achieved using gyroscopes and it still needs to be corrected for things like the effects of the Earth's rotation um, as well as the Coriolis and, and centrifugal forces. But basically the acceleration is resolved into components. and then integrate it. So the velocity 
is the integral of the acceleration, and the distance is the integral of the velocity. So with this inertial navigation system, you can get the velocity and position relative to some starting point. However, the error accumulates with time, because as essentially you're adding up, you're integrating, you're adding bits and bits of data together, and each one has an uncertainty associated with. So the, the error builds up, um, and a good system accumulates error at a rate of about 2 kilometers per hour. Now, just before I move on from this, I just want to recall uh, a little bit of terminology, the difference between ground speed and airspeed. So ground speed is the velocity of the aircraft. relative to a fixed point on the Earth. And airspeed is the velocity relative to the wind. And of course, if the air is completely still, the two are one and the same. So. What we obviously, in the end, care about is the ground speed in aircraft, but all that the aerodynamics cares about is the airspeed. Now, finally, GPS and INS can be coupled to an autopilot system. Um, and this will automatically set, uh, follow a set of predefined waypoints. And waypoints are just geographic locations where something changes. The direction, speed, altitude. So just to say a little bit more about autopilot systems. Basically, this is a computer-controlled system that uses uh, navigational and onboard sensor data to guide an aircraft along a pre-programmed flight path. Basically, it's a computer-controlled flying. And this therefore controls the throttle, the elevator, the ailerons, and the rudder to achieve the desired flight path uh, using the specified uh, maneuvering parameters. This is something we're not really going to talk about anymore in this course, but developing an autopilot is something that we'll be essentially doing uh, in the aerodynamics and performance course uh, for those of you who will be taking that next year.